Hello, this is Fargo here. Um, this is basically what my current computer looks like um, with a few upgrades. It originally did not come with this car graphics card and this processor. Um, the reason I am doing this video is because in the coming next few days I will be upgrading my desktop therefore I will most likely not be using this computer any longer. I will be upgrading well I already have upgraded the processor and the graphics card. Um, the graphics card I upgraded from origin what was originally a Sapphire HD 7850 into an NVIDIA GTX 770 and power supply which I have also upgraded from a 460 watt power supply to a GS Corsair GS 700 watt power supply um, the reason for this upgrade is because one my next computer will not only have water cooling but it will also have require a great deal more power than what a 460 watt power supply can provide moving on I will be keeping the hard disk drive and two SSDs originally this was the only what SSD inside I have added this one in I will not be keeping the CD drive because it is completely obsolete now I will not be keeping the RAM I will be completely changing the CPU but I will be keeping the graphics card and the processor so the power supply so the only things I will keep would be graphics card, power supply and storage devices um, moving on I will show you what I am going to be upgrading them with okay so this is basically my computer equipment cupboard so as you can see there's a lot of random crap in here um, some of them which I am still currently using some of them which I am no longer using now um, on to the upgrades that I mentioned earlier. I will be upgrading the motherboard with this Asus Crosshair 5 Formula Z motherboard. Um, the reason I went for this is because I do want to overclock my processor, which is this thing right here. It is an FX8350 processor. I have gone with AMD this time rather than Intel because I one, I need the multi-threaded benefits which AMD does provide as opposed to Intel and two I prefer more speed because this AMD processor is capable of reaching 5 gigahertz which is what I want to achieve um, for the RAM I have gone with a Kingston HyperX Fury as you can see over here Fury yep um, I do not need a beast a Fury is more than enough for my purposes and over here you can see the current power supply I'm using the GS700 um, and if we look around here we can see my old mouse mat which is a oops, Dota 2 edition of the Steel Series Quick uh, there we go no longer using that anymore found a better one uh, this is my current graphics card, what I'm using, uh, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 770 by LedTech. Decent card, 2GB only, but that's all, uh, that's all you'll ever need, honestly. And Coupe de Gras, this thing right here, which is a EK, uh, let's see if we can focus that, EKL kit. 240 L240 water cooling kit. Uh, this kit comprises of a CPU block, a 240mm radiator, a pump and reservoir combo, fans, tubing, fittings, all that good stuff. Everything necessary to start your first water cooling unit. Um, for today, I think I'm just gonna start 
off with a out of the box build at least until my chassis has arrived which is due most likely in the next few days okay so now I'm going to do the out of the box build first while waiting for my chassis so I'm going to go ahead and open this box um, the reason that I need to do an out of the box build is um, to make sure that all the components work before you actually start putting them in the case because it would really suck if you built everything nicely, cable managed everything, took a shit ton of time doing that and it just did work because the processor was faulty or something like that. So here's to hoping that um, everything is in full working order. Um, generally when doing this you would want to have a anti-static wrist strap. I have mine on my ankle so that it doesn't get in the way um, and we need to make sure that you handle everything in here with care so that you don't damage anything. Let's get this out of the box real quick. There we go. Uh, uh, you should use an anti-static workbench, um, but if you don't have one, then you can just imitate me with the motherboard box as the anti-static workbench. That's fine. The sticker, I'm just going to leave that on. I'll peel that off later once I've done my build. And I'm going to just lift up the retention arm. Now I'm going to take my processor. Processor box as soon as I've found the. Yeah, there it is. Box and there we go. And there we go. Um, I will be using the EK's CPU block as a cooling but for this and the actual build but for this out of the box build I will just use the stock cooler because that is all I need now first thing we set the CPU cooler aside we will take the processor now we will do not this be very careful with it Make sure that it doesn't get that you don't want to damage the pins of the processor. That's the important part. Now, you see these processor pins? You don't want to damage them. They're very vital. So it's very careful that you align the gold triangle on this corner. And I'm not sure if you can see it here, I'll show you. The gold triangle on this corner right here. With the gold triangle with the triangle mark on the motherboard, like so, and you're just going to drop it in. Now when you drop it in, be very careful not to damage anything. Give it a little wiggle, if it's in place, drop the retention arm, and you're done. Now you just attach the CPU cooler. In this case, normally you would require to put a thermal compound, but with most stock CPU coolers, that thermal compound is already pre-applied on the base of it, as you can see here. Now, when installing this thing, you must be very careful that this said. Uh, one end will not have this clip that you see over uh, I'll show you my shirt. over here there is this clip so what you are going to do is you are going to place this on the top get this wire out of the way first the CPU fan must go in the CPU slot you are going to place this on hook that there Once that is hooked on, we will hook the second one. There we go. 
Alright, CPU fan is in. Sort of. This is just an out-of-box test. I won't be using this cooler, thank god. Now to install the RAM. For the RAM, since this is a single, I'm only using a single slot RAM, which I will also I will be upgrading later on in the future into a dual channel 16 gig RAM. But since it is only a six an eight GB stick of RAM in a single slot, need to make sure that this thing lines up. Open up that butterfly clip. Insert it like so. This is the old graphics card. I will have to attach it in here. I will have to lift up the motherboard slightly. That in, hopefully not. No, I can just move this to here a bit to shove it in. Yes. yes. There we go. That is in. That is in. The graphics card is now in. There. Perfect. Okay. That's everything plugged in. Uh, now the cable. I will just quickly plug in this DVI cable in. Uh, into here. I believe it is. Yes. Into here. Um, I will have to connect the 24 pin connector. Which is this one here. This big one. Uh, connect it like so. Oh, I have to be very careful with this cables. Yep, I think I will need to connect this. There we go. And the other 12 watt pin, volt, sorry. 12 volt pin, which uh, is somewhere here, I believe. Yeah, this one. If I'm not mistaken. Yep, it's this plug. Alright, this too. Uh, for some reason this power supply is a dual channel like that. Now for the single PCI Express power, which is this one right here, I believe. Yep. I will need to plug you into here. Alright. Everything has power. I will turn on the power supply. Power on. And hope that it has power. Alright, there goes the fan. And the monitor is not getting anything. Yes, this thing is running through its process, as you can. S I'm not sure if you can see from the camera. Um, it is running through its process codes here. Uh, oops. Hold on one second. Right here, it's a bit too bright for you to see. I think. And you can see here, new CPU installed. All right, press F1 to run setup. We will not do anything of the sort. We know that it works. Everything powers. Actually, scratch that. We should plug in something to uh, make sure that it actually works. Um, so I will put that there and grab a grab the keyboard and I will press F1 on it to run the setup. Current press F1 to enter the BIOS setup. Alright. Voila! We are in the BIOS, proving that everything works. This is Farco, and 
this is update one of my new desktop build which I will be calling Insidious. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all very soon.